Okay, hello again, everybody. We're going to talk about rootless voicings again today and specifically how to practice them. And at the end of this, I'm going to uh, put my camera up and show you what's on top of my piano. Just, you know, because, hey, people like to, you know, nose around, see what other people are doing. So anyway, but uh, let's talk about how to practice these rootless voicings. Now, we took this uh, rather long video yesterday and took this chord and analyzed it uh, to be six different chords. You know, it could be a G seventh, it could be a, a D flat seventh altered. A D minor 6 9, a B minor 7 flat 5, uh, an F major 7 with a flat 5, and also uh, a E suspended with a flat 9 dominant 7th. And also it can function there as a kind of a Phrygian type of sound. Like that. Um, but you know, you can't learn everything at once. You've got to decide what, what you need to learn and, you know, limit it to something that you can grasp and, and uh, learn well enough that you have it more or less for automatic recall on the piano. Uh, and these box voicings are, you know, pretty easy to do that with. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I think is, would be the most effective way to start practicing these. Okay, so we'll take this first one, G dominant seventh. One thing you could do is play a little stride piano, go through the cycle of fifths, kind of get familiar with these chords, like that. Um, another thing you could do would be play the roots with the left hand. Uh, but here's how you'll probably be using them more than anything else in two five ones. So let's practice two five ones. And here I'm using a rootless voicing on D. I'll use the box voicing here on G seventh. And then I'll go to C major seventh either this way or I might do this way. That's a C six nine. Sometimes you can just hit the fourths there too. And uh, uh, you know, as I do this, I pro uh, you know, I'm not going to think too much about that one chord. I've got this down for automatic recall, so I should be able to do this. And what I'm going to do, uh, there's lots of ways you could do this, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about as high as you can possibly do this on the keyboard because, you know, you don't want your uh, accompaniment to get up too high. Uh, so this is about as high as you can go, I would say. And what I'm going to do is a 2-5-1 starting in A-flat. So this is B-flat minor 7th. My box voicing right there. This is box one and A flat major seventh. And I'll do that in all 12 keys. And while I'm doing that, I'll play a little major scale, something like uh, like that, okay? I'll put the root in at the end, maybe. Okay, now that was A flat. So now I'm gonna think in the key of uh, G, so I'll start on, you know, this, this really makes you think. It makes you think about two five ones and, and uh, kind of in random order almost. So uh, A minor seventh, and I'll start, uh, since this is a two five one in G, I'll start on a G up here. And I'll try to do the same thing, okay? And then I'll go to the next one, key of F sharp or G flat. And the key of F. See, that's my C seventh right there, box one. Okay, and then let's see what key am I at F. So I'll go to E next. And e flat. And right there, I just played three notes in my box voicing. My fingers are kind of trained to do it that way also. Okay, so I've never done that particular exercise before. I just kind of made it up for this video, but I'm going to practice it a little bit. All right, so another way that you can practice these, uh, in, in box one, we said box one can also function as a dominant chord altered, like D flat here, D flat seventh with a sharp nine and a flat 13. So I'm going to use that also, and I'm going to start right here on A flat uh, you know, how am I going to start this? Yeah, I'm going to start right here uh, on A flat minor and go to my D flat altered and then end up on G flat major seventh. Or in this case, I did a six nine. Yeah, so. 
I'll try to do the major seventh because I don't feel like I use that very often like that. I end up going to the six nine chord a lot. So I'm going to practice this. And I could do the left hand uh, bass notes. All right, A flat minor seven, D altered. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing this and moving down one one half step at a time until I get too low, and then I'm going to jump up an octave and finish out the uh, the twelve different keys. So starting on A flat. And let's see, a little melody I could put in here. So this is the two chord, A flat minor seventh in the key of G flat. And I'll play one, two, three, five scale tones. Then it'll come down in whole steps because that's the altered scale and it fits with an, you know, this is a D flat altered chord. And then I'll end on the ninth like that. Okay, so here it goes. I'll have a one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Come down in whole steps. And then end on the major nine. Okay? And that was the key of G flat. So now I'm going to do the key of F. Uh, all right. And here, here I ended on a you know, root position chord. That's okay. I was going to try to do that. Let's move on to box two, and I'll quickly show you how to do the same thing in box two. Uh, you're going to, let's see, our chord was this. It's, so we're going to start with D minor seventh like this. All right, that's key of C. And I'll do the key of B. And this is pretty easy, right, when you're, when you're going to the, the unaltered box voicing because you just move one note from the from your minor nine chord. Okay. Uh, what's next? Key B flat. Okay, let's see here. Okay. What's a little harder is to uh, use the um, the altered version because you've got to change more notes, right? So if this is now no longer G seventh but D flat dominant seventh with a sharp nine and a thirteen. Going to be doing it in a minor two five one here. Okay, so A flat minor, D flat dominant, and G flat major seventh. Okay, and let's see, see if I can come up with a little run here. I guess I'll just do the same thing. So you got to change three notes. You got these two go there, and this one comes down. So everything moves a half step. This goes down a half step. This goes down a half step. This goes up a half step. I don't know if I've ever thought about that before, but that's what's happening. Okay, and that's G flat there. Okay, now the key of F. This ought to be easier. Right, because you know. I do that all the time. I might do this way, unaltered, that's box one, or using box two, I get the altered one right there. Okay, good way to practice, key of F. All right, so that's key of F. All right, now key of E. Naturally, I'm not quite as good in the key of E. I guess I don't play with guitar players often enough. It's a horn player, so there's E flat. All right, key of D, guitar player key again. You know, I'm being somewhat sarcastic about that. Just know every key and you'll be in good shape. That gives you two different ways to practice each box. You know, you practice um, you practice uh, box one using this as an unaltered chord like this use it as an altered chord like this. All right. And then box two, you do the same thing. As an unaltered G seventh chord, it's like this, two, five, one. Or as an altered chord, it's like this, two, five, one. All right, see? A minor two, five, one, you can use it box voicings exclusively. If you look in the third or fourth column of box two, you'll see uh, that this chord 
can function as a minor seven flat five. Okay, so if I use that as the two, then I'll use box one for an E altered, and then I'll use box two again for A minor seven, A, A minor six nine. Okay, so I got a two five one like this, box two, box one, box two. Maybe I could do uh, box two, box two, and box one. So there's using our, uh, our example chord as a, as a two chord. Oh, let me show you a two, five, one where, where this is the five chord, okay? So if it's an altered chord, that would be D flat altered. So I'm going to start with A flat minor seventh. Okay, minor seven flat five. And look, here's A flat minor seven flat five. But you can change it to box two just like this, uh, uh, moving the third to the fourth. And then, this is an interesting trick here. If you're doing a 2-5-1, the bass moves up a fourth, right? Or down a fifth, right, to the five chord. But you can move this chord up a minor third and get box two of the altered voicing, all right? Now, the reason it doesn't move the same distance is because we're using it as two different chords. Here it's a minor seven flat five. Here it's an altered chord. Uh, even though it's, you know, it's exactly the same voicing, you see. But here it's a minor seven two five. There's an altered chord, and then I want to find one for um, right there. That's box one. All right, so box two, box two, and box one for F sharp minor seven six nine. All right. So you can practice uh, minor two five ones like that, say in the key of D. All right, that's a, there. I'm showing the example chord here. Box one as a D minor six nine. So I start with E minor seven flat five, make it a box voicing by doing this. Get to the five chord by moving up a minor third. You know how this works? And then to the D minor six nine. And you'll hear this all. You anytime you hear a tune, there's lots of tunes that use that that two five one. Six nine kind of creeps up against the melody a little bit, so now see if you use altered in the wrong place because the melody was that, so that would have been a better choice. Here's my rearrangement. And here's a uh, good way to practice uh, box three. Now, I would take box three and just, here it is. And I, I think I would just use it in this one position for a while. Get used to doing it here as a G seventh chord, okay? So you do a two, five, one to C major seventh, okay? Two, five, one. All right. And uh, let's go around the cycle of fifths this time. So if I'm in the key of C, Next one's key of F, so I gotta think of the two chord. There's my box three. It's just like box one, except it's got a flat there. And a okay, now key of B flat, which means I gotta think C minor, because that's the two chord. All right, now we're doing E flat, A flat, all right, D flat. And so D flat, the two chord is E flat. The five chord is A flat. There's my box voicing. See, if it wasn't G, it was an A flat. And, you know, you can always practice these, you know, around the cycle this way. Okay. Uh, there you go. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's enough for the next month or so, so. No more videos for a month. No, I'm kidding. I'll be back. Okay. So first of all, we come to my Holy Bible right here. Yeah, I mean, 
This book was in pretty good shape when I bought it off of eBay a few years ago. But I, but I love this book. And I love this edition of the book. You know, we get an, I have another one, actually. Wait until this one wears out. So, I'm a Bach guy. I love Bach. All right. Practicing some Chopin waltzes. Got my real book that I was using yesterday. Uh, I, I can play... Uh, I used to be able to play the second one, now I can play the fourth one. All right, more Bach. Love these transcriptions of choral preludes. Uh, nice little chart on how to go from one chord to the next uh, if you're writing classical music. Only use root position and first inversion. Don't use second inversion. Not very much. The Italian concerto. I have not practiced that in quite a while. Uh, some charts, and uh, you know, a lot of charts. Now, like I said, uh, here's some Del Baroni charts I've been practicing a little bit of. More Bach, and uh, you know, my goal at one point was to play every piece in this book, but when I discovered book two, I kind of scaled that back a little bit. And I'd say between the two books, I know maybe 30, 35 of these these pieces out of 96. Yeah. Right now I'm learning the uh, F minor prelude and fugue in, in uh, Well-Tempered Clavier Book 2. Rachmaninoff can play the prelude in C sharp and the one in G. This is a really great book too. This is a great edition. Uh, if you can find one on eBay, the fingering is the best. Uh, Bach Inventions. I use this for study because I try to write Bach and uh, I recently wrote a piece really studying the first uh, three-part invention in C. Okay, I can play the first ballad in G minor and not that well. I hope someday to get into Scarlatti. Keep putting a book up there. A2. These are above my pay grade. I can't really play any of them. Number three, maybe. love the first piece in Brahms. I mean, this piece is so awesome. I used to teach this wonderful class that Yamaha Music uh, developed, and I still use some of these books with my private students. Got a jazz gig recently. Got to get good, practice my jazz chops, so, you know, J.B. Abersoll is the way to go. Dictionary of Music. Learning the first scherzi, all right, scherzo. It's a tough one. Suzuki, ah, you know, I'm gonna have more to say about Suzuki method here in one of these videos. Yeah, some of it's good. Ah, currently working on the two sonatas. Uh, what is it, the K330, K330, and uh, this one, the one that goes. music and uh, write the chord progressions down and stuff try to get you know a feel for how to flow through a you know if I'm writing a piece try to get a good chord progression more analysis of Bach uh, various jazz stuff that I pass out to my students from time to time uh, this is more of my wife's stuff over here so arrangement of my part of the wall. All right, I keep hoping Jennifer will sing this song. I've got a beautiful arrangement of this. Uh, I mean, I lifted it off the uh, Joni Mitchell orchestra kind of album. Let me play it for you. <laughs> 